Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Friend Friends. I'm your host, Fred Schultz, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking WCPL. Um, man, I got to tell you, I'm still up over this last weekend. I had such a great time at such a great field with so many terrific, terrific, that's two terrifics. Now, usually I don't throw two of them out like that, but you know, Terrific people. It just absolutely great, great time. And I got to say, I real quick, uh, you know, Bonchek, how you beat Paul Farrell on for comments, I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, Paul holds the record, you know, between him and Ryan Courtney, man. I don't know. That was pretty good. And I got to say hi to Tony Dietz tonight, too, my friend. How you doing, brother? So a uh, few things I got to mention before I get into it here tonight, but you know, um, I've got some great, great people on tonight. I've actually got one of the owners of Panhandle Paintball, Mr. Steve Prisco is going to be on. I've got uh, some great, great guys. Uh, one of the guys from Lockout, a terrific team. Um, I, I, I really, really like those guys a lot, Mr. Bruce Tucker. And then I've got one of my friends. Now, I'm calling him a friend because, you know, him and I have been kind of hooked up here for the past few months, and he is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And he's half of uh, uh, Teddy Talks, which is a super cool podcast, and it's on Thursday night. You get a chance, you're going to want to watch it. I'm going to have Mr. Ruben Salter on. Terrific, terrific guy. This stone right here, that is a bloodstone. Ruben made that for me and presented that to me uh, down there at the Florida Panhandle uh, paintball tournament. And I got to tell you, I was just, um, I was overwhelmed. I mean, uh, people know I like things. I, I just, I, you know, I don't know why. It's not because I get something like that. It's just because of the meaning of it. You know, the meaning of it really, it just is something special to me. You know, another quick thing. I, I got a, a jersey back here. Paint the World. Now, Paint the World is a group um that um you know mike barney put together it's a team also but what they do is they take old paintball equipment and they help kids get into the sport by giving them the old paintball equipment and doing stuff like that you know um and i think that's absolutely terrific and my very 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 good friend and one of the band mes members mr james stevens we call him spike he purchased that for me i got my name on the back and everything and i absolutely love it i think it is so cool and oh my gosh well, we got Joshua Estrada watching. Josh, another very, very good friend of mine. But we have got the great Kevin Donaldson on here tonight. How cool is that? And his name is there. Love it. The rock star in the house. You are the rock star, my friend. You know that, don't you? So anyhow, I got a few things I want to mention. And I want to bring these guys out. And I want to talk about the tournament. Because, you know, I really, really love the WCPL. I think it's absolutely terrific. Um, and I think it's a great organization. I think what it's doing and the way it's, you know, the way it's bringing people together, you know, it's a big thing, guys. You know, I always talk about, you know, individually, we can do a lot of stuff for paintball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But collectively, we can do an awful lot of stuff for paintball. And it seems like the WCPL is bringing a lot of people together. And uh, the more we bring people together, the more we get to know each other and the more we get to work with each other and, and build a sport of paintball. I think it's absolutely cool. And, oh, my buddy, James. Now, James, I'm going to probably blow your last name. McGulliff. McGuffer. Oh, I call him Howdy, and that's what I'm going to do. James was there. He played with the Blasters for 30 years. 30 years ago, he played for the Master Blasters. And James was just there this last weekend and played with the Master Blasters again. And I got to tell you, it was heart, just totally heartwarming to see him out there doing this. Um, you know, he just went through chemotherapy, which everybody knows is not an easy deal. And I got to tell you, he looked good. He played good. And he sounded good. And he was out there rocking away. Um, absolutely terrific, terrific person. Love the guy. I've uh, been friends with him for more years than I even care to remember. 30 plus, that's for sure. And Damon Fowler. Oh, hey, let me tell you, Damon. You made Spike that neck piece, man, that said the band. It was outstanding. Very, very Cool. I, I absolutely love it. You know, and, and Gator Melia, if you guys ever get a chance out there and you want something cool, because, you know, these masks are cool. You know, there's no problem with the mask, but man, if you've ever got shot in the neck, you'd appreciate what this guy does. 
it's it's a, a, a piece that hooks on your mask and goes down. It looks like something from the medieval times. It is so cool. I mean, I got one over here, and I, but I will not use it because I, it was something special he gave it to me, and I'm keeping it forever just like that. But it is absolutely cool the way it goes down. No weight to it at all, but it'll protect your neck from them shots. Very, very cool. If you, you know, get a chance, uh, you know, you can get a hold of Damon or just get on get her melee on there, and uh, you will absolutely love it. It's a terrific, terrific product. And real quick, speaking of products, now, I've been talking for the last four months about, yeah, Tim Schloss is coming out with the new Tiger Stripe. Well, you know, Tim, it's got to be perfect or it's not going to be, period. That's just how it works. You know, I love the guy. Yes, you know, him and Dan Colby, they've been that way forever. You know, product's got to be perfect or it just doesn't go out. Well, the colors weren't right. We were bringing back the original Tiger Stripe camouflage. Well, the colors are right. They are on their way. And the tags and everything will say, tiger stripe products now all the knockoffs now can't say that it is matter of fact you know um well i won't get into about the knockoff stuff but this is it right here this is the original tiger stripe and you can tell by the three fingers right here that is the original tiger stripe and they're uh being made right now and they should be out here in the next couple of weeks and uh those along with the original fred gear which is the tiger stripe body and the black sleeves i always had the black sleeves so you couldn't see my arm hanging out of a black tree because i play a lot of woods ball so anyhow these guys are going to be out here uh, you're going to want to stay in touch because these guys are going to be on the market probably within the next two three weeks and uh only having a hundred of them made at a time so the first hundred are going to be the the real collectible ones that's for sure like i say it'll have the tag tiger stripe products so real quick now i gotta mention um the next WCPL tournament coming up is going to be the New York Classic, and it's going to be in Newburgh, New York, and it's the 9th, 10th, and 11th of uh, June. And uh, I got to tell you, it's a great place to play. If you've never played the Ponderosa, it's a legendary field, and once you run it, you'll see why it's legendary. It's a no guesswork. It's uh, a terrific one. Kevin Donaldson has worked very, very hard over the past couple of years. Uh, putting everything together and making that feel just perfect. And uh, you get a chance, like I say. And when I talk about all these tournaments, no matter which one I talk about, everybody, you know, if you can't get out there and play, at least go out there and support it. Go out there and, and show everybody, you know, hey, you know, I'm out here. I'm supporting paintball. I'm supporting this team. I'm checking it out. You'd absolutely love it. Because, you know, down in Florida, Panhandle Paintball, down at Stephen uh, Dan's uh, field down there this weekend, there was an awful lot of people that were not playing paintball that came out to check it out. And, you know, one thing I think that was uh, absolutely terrific was, you know, 99% um, of the players were absolutely very gracious and great. And it just makes our sport look good. You know, you don't want to come off the field no matter what happens. You want to come over, something goes on, talk about it but you do not want to come off the field screaming and yelling because people that don't play the sport see this and you are not helping our sport and you're not helping yourself either. You make yourself look bad. You know, nothing can't be talked out, you know, and it's like me, you know, you come up to me and you talk to me and I can work anything out. You come up and yell in my face and you can take a hike period. So, you know, you always get more with honey than you do with sugar. You know? So anyhow, 9th, 10th, and 11th, June, Newburgh, paintball, 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 New York Classic. You're going to want to be there. Now, I also got to mention um, a friend of mine, uh, the Montressor Classic. Uh, Jennifer and Frank Montressor have taken over the reins from their son, Tim. And this year, it's going to be at Fox Paintball, and it's in Yorkville, Illinois. And it's going to be July 29th and 30th. And um, it's going to be pretty cool. It's... Uh, Rob Walker is giving them a hand out there, and uh, it's a 10-man, and you're going to want to get out there and do it. Uh, you know, like I say, we support all the people. I support the NXL. I support all of it, period. And that's what we should all do. There's room for all of us in this. Um, you know, do it like the WCPL. Are we going to compete against the NXL? No, that's not what we're after. We're after giving people a good time, bringing back some of the fun that we used to have back in the day. And that's what we're that's what we're trying to do right now. I, and uh, I absolutely uh, love what we're doing. I really, really do. 
let me give my shout outs real quick because you know these shout outs um they mean a lot to me you know the guys i mention on here all the time every week they're very very special people and what they've done for people over the years is absolutely terrific and uh i start out every week with mr tim schloss tiger stripe camouflage gonna be on the market pretty darn quick you're gonna want to jump in and grab some of these especially the first run ones they're they're gonna be special Anyhow, he owns Gateway Paintball, and Tim is the last WCPL tournament of the year, and he will be in October, and it's in St. Louis, and you're going to absolutely love it. Then Dan and John Colby, um, they've been my sponsors for 30-some years. Uh, started out Air America, and now Immortal Air. And Dan is part owner of the Panhandle Paintball down there in Florida, the event that we just went to, and had a great, great time. My brother, Mr. Bud Orr. Terrific, terrific person. Um, I love the guy, cut and dry. And uh, he, uh, hopefully, he, he's uh, recovering. So he's going to be back out there with us here pretty soon. And uh, we always wish him the best of luck. Love him a lot. And Tom K. Tom K. was my second sponsor for MAG. He had the uh, air gun design, the auto mag. He for my marker. It, it was just, I shot it for years. It was just a terrific, terrific gun. I, I absolutely loved it. And Rainy Juvie Boucher, two times a month, you could go out to your local field, pick up a newspaper. It's called Paintball News. And let me tell you, inside Paintball News had everything, period. What just happened? What was coming up? Where all the fields were located? Little maps, you know, what was new, what was for sale, everything. It was, uh, it was the bomb, really. And, uh, I kind of miss a lot of stuff like that. You know, that now we're in the electronic age, and I guess that's just how it is now. But, you know, it, it, to me, back in the day, you know, to go pick up in Paintball News or, or like Randy Camilla's APG or Jerry Braun's uh, Paintball Sport Magazine, it was just something. You know, I got them hanging all over in, in my house, you know, different articles and different things like that. And, you know, the the internet and everything is fine. I love it. But, you know, you can't hang that on your wall. You know, it's not something you can walk by and look at and go, wow, that is so cool that I got that. So all of those people, I always remember them and I mention them every week because they've all worked very, very hard for paintball. Along with Ross Alexander, Line SI, that was my very first market sponsor, my Bushmaster. I still have my very first Bushmaster I played professional with. And then Jim Lively, two tournaments a year that you wanted to go to. One was Jim Lively's Masters. The other was Jerry Brown's World Cup. It was like going to an old homecoming. It was just, uh, you knew all your friends and everybody were going to be there. It was just great. And then every week, I got to mention my buddy Gino. Now, Gino from Belkin. Uh, I got uh, my Belkin shirt over here, but I got so much jammed in here right now. I can't get it over here. But Gino does so much outside uh, for paintball. You know, you guys don't see what this guy does. You know, I mean, is he a big shot? Yeah, he's a big shot. Did he work his way up? Absolutely. You know, you guys don't know. You know, Gino started, Gino had national paintball supply back in the day, but Gino started by going out and collecting tubes from players, 10 round tubes from players that had played out there in the woods and bring them home, clean them up, fill them. So, you know, it's not like Gino had a gazillion dollars and they go, here, Gino, have a paint, be a paintball god, you know. So, you know, the respect for Gino for me is is tremendous. It really is. And not just for that. That's a big thing. You know, what he's what he's done and what he's earned, I think, is is very gratifying and, and terrific. But what Gino does for people that that he just doesn't toot his horn, you know. Um, I have to, you know, just like Tracy Perez, you know, Tracy Perez, I love her, never knew her. Gino calls me up, he goes, Fred, he goes, I, I have a lady that's got a bad lung problem and uh, her insurance is not covering everything. Is there something you could do? So I jumped on, did a, a, a raffle thing for her. I had all kinds of great people donate all kinds of things, including uh, Damon Fowler from Gator Melee and Gino donated a bunch of stuff too. And we auctioned it all off and raised over $6,000 for her. Uh, when I'm down at the World Cup, I says, yeah, I said I was going to have a, another little giveaway. Uh, and what did Gino do? He goes, hey, Freddie, I'll send you three markers. He sent me some beautiful stuff. So I mentioned Gino every week. You know, um, there's all kinds of paintball manufacturers out there. I understand this. And, you know, I uh, my hat's off to all of them. 
I know Gino. I know him well. I know what he does for the sport. So that's why I mention him every week. And then last but not least, Young Guns. I am wearing one of my Young Guns things right now. This was given to me by Mr. Scott McDonald and his son, Graylin. I uh, absolutely love it. It's terrific. I don't know if I can stand up here. That's it. North Bay Young Guns. Uh, just absolutely love the jersey. Love all the jerseys I get. I think they're cool as hell. But uh, two little Young Guns I got to mention that I actually started with a couple years ago and were actually at the tip of the spear, I would have to say, was uh, Mark Gong Jr. and Jaden Gong, uh, the sons of uh, Mark Gong Sr., Terrific, terrific. So anyhow, I've given you all the information I'm going to give you tonight. I'm sure you guys are sick of listening to me talk. Um, you know, I tell everybody, you know, my tongue's like tied in the middle and flaps on both ends. But I do love it. And uh, I, I just really, really, really do like my viewers. So uh, you guys, you guys are piling in here tonight. I'm liking this. Very, very cool. So what do you say I drag all these guys out at one time? I've got, you know, I, at the tournament, I always say that I'm blessed, not for who I am, but for the people I get to know. And each time I go to one of these events, I not only get to see my really, really good friends, some for a lot of years, some for a lot of months, and some brand new ones. And I got to tell you, they all just are something special. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of you out there experience the same thing. And I just think it's absolutely terrific. I really do. I'm going to start real quick with Mr. Steve Prisco. What's going on, Steve? I forgot to unmute my mic. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was sitting there trying to lip read, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Like, what's going on? Why isn't he? Oh, right, right. The, the mic. Got to turn that on. I'm uh, I'm exhausted, Fred. That's how I am. I'm, I'm not oh, gonna lie. On. I'm exhausted. Come on, you got to sleep an hour all weekend. That's all you need. <laughs> I got I got more than an hour. I got like three. Uh oh. I got somebody. Let me bring you other two guys out here real quick. Oh wait, hold tight. Who am I talking to? Oh, yeah. Well, we were just talking about you. We were talking about Tiger Stripe Camouflage. Everybody, this is Mr. Tim Schloss from Tiger Stripe Camouflage. What's going on, buddy? Watching it rain. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to rain. And then tomorrow, Bill's coming up with the boat. We're taking it over and get started on the new boat project. Well, there you go. You know, just in time for the rain. At least you'll have yeah. a boat. You know, <laughs> I, out here, man, we've got so much rain. I'm ready to build an ark. So. I'm telling you what, man, I got your ark, except I brought it up here from Bill and I brought it back from Bud, so you can't have it now. <laughs> you you see right behind me, you see that, that gorgeous looking uh, tiger shirt I got? I'm the, I'm in the truck. I'm not around the computer. That's why I said I oh, I, oh, well. I, I got called off to the thing and I said, I told you I'd call, and I'm calling. But well, I, I got the I got the tiger stripe uh, hanging right behind me. I told everybody that uh, they're going to be out in two, three weeks. They should be here, and um, I we guess we're going to start without... selling them, huh? Yeah, yeah, we'll have all that worked out. We'll have all that figured out by the, by your next show on how they can get them if they want them. You know, and we'll see if uh, see if everybody has said they wanted it really wants it. You know, but and we'll now have... now this has got the original tag on it. This says. Tiger Stripe products, correct? Yeah, this is this is this is the authentic item. It's there's no phony. You know, we're not somebody filling our canteen out of somebody else's uh, lake. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, the, we're the we're the real thing. We're the, this this is the garment that put lots of money back into the sport and uh, helped uh, as many people did build the sport. So, you know, you got a lot of guys that uh, you know decided it looked like a good deal to jump on the deal and. Well, take advantage of it, but them days are coming to an end pretty quick, I yeah, think. Yep. Well, you know, you got to understand, you know, that uh, when you got a winning product, everybody wants that winning product. Well, you know, the, you know the old saying, you know, you, you hire the hall, you get the band, you, you get the caterer, and everybody wants to come to the party. <laughs> Absolutely right. Well, I, I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I mean, and man, if I could ever get you on my show, uh, we could talk about it. Well, you know, Greg was over this afternoon. He said, we're getting a new computer this week. So um, All right. we're shopping for computers, and I might surprise you. 
Oh, okay. Well, you know, I'll be well, honest you know, with you, I that would surprise me. See, I got a face for radio, man. You're the one that's got a face for TV. <laughs> oh, no. Know, yeah. yeah. yeah maybe, maybe 40 years ago. <laughs> uh, but, uh, hey, how about that weekend, man? Did we have fun down there or what? That's not even the world. I mean, the word for it. I And, you know, I got Ruben Salter on here tonight. And I've got Bruce Tucker from Lockout. Remember all the guys from Lockout oh, come God. over and shook our hands I and love stuff? those guys from Lockout. First those guys class. Those from Lockout want their, that special spot that we gave them in St. Louis. They can have it again. First class. Oh, absolutely. You know, between no, them and, and, you know, Toxic Teddies. And oh. I, I just, you know, I, Tim, I met so many great people there this last week. And, you know, and that's what this is supposed to all be about. I love it. It was probably, yeah, it was probably as, as fun a tournament as I've been to. I got to tell you. You know, Lockout and those guys, they're, they're a pretty good team. And uh, it's its amazing just how organized they are. I mean, they got the, the oh. tents and they got their guns on racks. They got nice. Everybody over here is decent, nice people, man. I just love them. Well, and, and, and Ruben's team, man, those guys are great. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, if those guys, if Ruben's team doesn't represent what this league's all about, I, I don't know what does. I mean, they, they were just really, really nice stand-up players yep see that's what i that's that's what i thought about lockout you know that's why that's why i've got bruce on here tonight you know i mean there's a reason i put these people on you know that no i you know you don't uh you don't tolerate fools man i can tell you that not at all brother i've been around you for 35 years and long time uh, you're either in or you're out (laughs) bingo bingo that's how it should be too it was Danny's deal was really nice. I really like the woods ball field. I'm not a mounds guy. That's a young man's game, but we had fun on the big field. Yeah, and, Steve uh, and Danny did a great job on that woods ball field. Yeah, they no, was it terrific. was terrific. was clean and organized. And yep. Anyway, it was just, it was really good. And it, was, it was fun to see everybody. It was fun to play. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go back. And me too. You know, the only thing I missed was I didn't have a golf cart at this one, you know. I, I'm walking back and forth, I, I tell you. <laughs> we're, we're going to have to get us oh, one of those, like, Fred, uh, Fred. that they got, like, you know, for, like, when, when you did Disney. Remember the ones they had at Disney? They had, like, it was like a, a stretch limo. Ah, uh, oh, do I remember the ones they had at Disney? Oh, I yeah, love that. Though. Did I they treat us like a king down there, huh? Did they treat oh, us like king? God, I don't unbelievable man of course we gave him a number one show too you know well you know everything you know nobody believed you everybody goes ah it ain't gonna happen that's bullshit but man i'm telling you what it was what you said and more it yeah was, it was, i appreciate it was, that it was, it was, no it was that was I, I gotta tell you seriously that was probably the premier event that's ever been done in paintball i mean i mean how much bigger do you get than doing something like that at disney yeah that was pretty impressive and, and you know what was good was we had such a good time with some good people i mean our accommodations were excellent uh, just everything yeah. about it was uh that was first class but you know you never know we might throw something like that together again here in the future you know, you know we, we we're still uh, we're still kicking we got stuff going that's what i hear Right on, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was just, you know, you never cease to amaze me. Yeah, I love you, man. You know, you just never do. But anyway, I'll let you get back to the show. I'll, uh, I guess I'll have to catch you tomorrow when I get back. <laughs> but um, tell Ruben and those guys, and it was just, it was, it was just really a pleasure being around both, both of those teams. I mean, they were really, really. Yeah, you we know, got we got Jacob. They represent everything that we that we're all about. Yeah, we got Jacob Easter watching us right now. You know, he's the other half of Ruben on the, yeah, the show. Yeah. Kevin Donaldson, we've got we've got Kevin Donaldson, the Grand Kuba, watching tonight. Gino's oh. watching the show. Oh my God! Well, you say hi to Gino and you say hi to Kevin. Kevin, uh, I think you just did, brother. Yeah, well, those are, those, <laughs> those are two great people in this sport. They really are. I mean, this the stuff Gino's done. I mean, nobody understands what he's done. I know it. Sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I talk about it every week. And same thing with you, Jim. How do you like well, that picture of putting you on the internet? Huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me. You got me good. It was. Uh, I, I don't top Kevin with his bear, but you know, I, I guess it was okay. Yeah, you know that got that got. Uh, I think it's at 1,700 reaches in six hours. So oh my God. that's not bad, huh? Uh, I tell you, I didn't know I owed money to that many people. Oh, man, you're just, <laughs> no, you're just so photogenic, you know? 
Yeah, I loved it, man. Well, now I'm looking forward to the next one, and then I'm really looking forward to yours. You know, the yeah, the St. Gonna... Louis one is is really the, you know, that's the end one, and it's like the yeah. culmination of everything all year long. Last year I had a great time. This year I look to have a greater time. So yeah, yeah, well, well, it'll be it'll be good. Bill's go, when Bill comes up tomorrow, we're gonna kind of see what the, we haven't. Been, I haven't been back there since the tournament. I mean, I don't even know, you know, we'll go back there and kind of take a look and see what. Uh, you what haven't been home in, in, in eight weeks. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know. <laughs> the guy I just know. got home. He's been out traveling for eight weeks, you know. Uh, yeah, life's yeah. rough. Now, I, I feel sorry for you. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, somebody, it's a tough deal. Somebody had to do it. Yeah, you? I've been there. I've been there for, what, 14 uh, years. <laughs> I mean, no, it'll be good. But I got... Uh, you know, I guess next weekend I got to we'll go up to Monte Casino and we'll do that, and then I, then the then the car racing starts again, and then I don't know. It, we're gonna be pretty busy for the next five months, I think. Yep, it sounds good, my friend. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll have that stuff out here shortly, and like I said, and we'll uh, get everybody filled in if anybody wants any. We can get them taken care of. And sounds so, good. Yeah, yeah we we can get we can get more and, uh, more information hey, next week. Yeah, well, I thank Ruben and uh, the guys from Lockout, man. Those guys really, they were, they're a great example on what we're trying to do. And it sure, uh, it sure helps having guys like that around to help make things go right. Well, that's what makes paintball. Yeah. Well, yeah. The bad guys don't about, make paintball. The bad guys don't make anything except things no. bad, you know, come on. Well, you know, so. here's the deal. You're, you're no better than what you associate with. Correct. No, I agree. I mean, you know, you want to hang, you want to, you want to hang around good guys. Hang around good guys. You want to, you want to go and have a, spend a bunch of money and be miserable. You know, there's places for that too. You know. <laughs> right on, brother. But uh, anyway. We'll All right, my now. friend. <laughs> we'll see you guys. All right. And, uh, tell Bill to give me the calls when he's on his way up, so I know what time to get ready. I will. Give Terry a hug for me. I'm gonna do that. All right, brother. Love you, man. See you guys. Bye bye. -bye. That was Mr. Tim Schloss, Tiger Stripe Camouflage, everybody. Let me get to uh, my other guests out here. This is kind of running a little long here. Uh, we got Steve out here. Steve is the owner of Panhandle Paintball. Now I want to bring out a couple of really cool guys. Um, I'm going to bring out a, a guy that I've been on his show. He's been on my show before. Uh, a lot of respect. Terrific guy. Gave me this very, very cool bloodstone here, which I will cherish. Please, everybody, welcome Mr. Ruben Salter. What's up, Rube? What's up? How's it going? It's going pretty good. How about you, my friend? Doing great. Doing great, brother. Yeah, yeah. I had a had a great time, and uh, I got another good guy I want to bring out. You know, I, this guy met him before, but I really got to talk to him just a little bit more at the last tournament, and he made such an impression on me, just like you do. You know, um, you know, people that make an impression on me, I love pushing them in the sport of paintball because that's what makes paintball bigger and better. So Absolutely. please, everybody, welcome Mr. Bruce Tucker from Lockout. Good evening, gentlemen. How you doing, my friend? Doing all right. How are y'all doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. You know, um, like I said earlier in the beginning, I'm still coming down from the high from last weekend, you know, uh, you know, playing, I love playing, you know, I mean, I'm an old dude, there's no doubt about it, it is what it is, but you know, I still get the same thrill when I'm in that starting box as I got when I started playing paintball in 1984, I get the same, the same excitement, just cannot wait for that whistle to go, so I can go, you know, now obviously I don't shoot out of there like a rabbit like I used to do, you know, but I do roll out of there anyhow. And uh, absolutely, absolutely love it. Really, really do. So I got to ask you. Now, everybody that's on this show, first thing I always ask them, Bruce, is how they got started in paintball. Well, you know, I don't know how Rube got started. I know how Steve got started. Definitely know how I got started. It's your turn, my friend. How'd you get started in paintball? Uh, in 2001, uh, my mom had bought us uh, Blade O2s for Christmas. So me and my brother and stepdad, we would go and play in the woods. But uh, we would basically do backyard ball until my dad took me to a real field in Monticello, Florida. And that was about 2007, 2008. And then uh, a buddy let me use his ion whenever they were pretty awesome. 
and that thing ripped. So I got into speedball that way, and then I joined the Marine Corps and took a hiatus. And then after I got out, uh, there was a local field here uh, called Tallahassee Paintball Sports, and I started going out there and just playing recreationally. And then uh, there's a team called Birds of Prey that uh, they play at the Maximum Velocity Paintball Series down in Kissimmee, Florida. And I got hooked up with those guys, and I usually run Snake for them, and they've taught me a good amount. And then they've helped me build up uh, the player I am. And then I went up to uh, a WCPL at Gator Paintball. I did photos for Lockout, and I met Matty Petrowski and Mama Bear. And they invited me to come up to New York and play in one of their tournaments that Lockout was throwing. And I got a uh, spot on Balls Deep, and we we rocked that tournament. We did pretty good. We actually ended up taking third place for the Lockout uh, right. tournament they put together. Uh, the team uh, allowed me to take the trophy home, and I was very appreciative of that. And I've made another family with Balls Deep. And after that tournament, uh, lockout, uh, some of their uh, people asked me if I'd like to play with them. And I was so excited. I jumped on the opportunity. And you got Rob Cole that runs GRC Paintball. And he's always so helpful on getting us taken care of with the professionalism. And then Mama Bear runs our pods, make sure that we're good and taken care of and we're on time. If anything, she can, like, get real tight with you if you aren't doing your stuff. <laughs> Uh, but I just know uh, with the paintball community, it's helped me to plug into different uh, branches and networking. And I've met some of the best people in the sport. And in all honesty, it's the biggest family I could ever have in this world. And it's yep. very dear to me. It, yep. it keeps life going. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, some of my best friends, probably most of my very, very best friends have been from paintball. So if it wasn't for paintball, you know, I would not know half of the good people that I know. And, uh, you know, paintball and memories, you know, memories are a big thing for me. You know, I mean, I've got memories all back at, way to 84 playing paintball. And I've had some terrific memories. I've had some bad ones, too. Some of them suck. I'm not going to say they're all beautiful, but, you know. The people I've got to meet and the things I've got to do, I feel extremely blessed. And every time I go to an event like this and I get to meet more new people, you know, just like Steve. I never knew Steve before. I never knew Ruben before, you know, and and since I've met these guys, you know, I, I see what they do for the sport. I see the compassion, the compassion that these guys have for the sport. And if you have no compassion for it, you know, if, if you're out there just to build yourself up, that's fine, but you're not doing anything to help the sport, period. You know, if people don't understand, it's such a simple philosophy. I've, I've had a million people ask me over the years, you know, oh, man, how'd you get so popular? You know, there is no big deal about it. Be nice to people. That's all it takes. It's such a simple, simple thing. You're nice to people. Next thing you know, people are talking nice about you. They tell somebody about you. That's all how it works. And then next thing you know, then you get a bunch of people together and they're going to go, hey, you might not be able to do this by yourself. But if we all do it together, we can make it happen. And that's how you make stuff happen. You know, it, it's just really, really simple. Yep. And don't you agree, Steve? Oh, I agree. A hundred percent. I mean, you've, you've got to have people that are willing to, to, to put aside sometimes pride, sometimes ego, sometimes money, just to make sure that, you know, what's what's right and doing the best you can. Otherwise nothing moves forward no absolutely right and you know i the people i get to meet like the lockout team you know in the same way with toxic teddy now, i'll get to you in a minute ruben because uh, <laughs> you're, a, you're a big part of that you and jacob easter are both a big part of it you know jacob uh the respect that i got from lockout just blew me away i mean all of these guys they came over shook my hand, uh, said what it was a pleasure it was to go out there and play against the band and everything like that. Now, you know, a lot of guys that, that when they come up to meet me, you know, they think it's something special for them. They will never understand how special it is for me. For me, it is extremely special to meet new people, especially the youngsters, you know, because you know, how many youngsters want to go up to an old guy, you know, and go, hey, man, what's happening? You know? 
<laughs> so, you know, it, it just works out. The guys from Lockout, I thought, were absolutely terrific. And you know, I got to take a picture with them. And, uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, you know, Bruce, uh, your team, you're very, very fortunate to, to have the guys that you have on that team. I thought they're, they're not only good players, which they are, um, but, you know, they're, they're very good individuals. They're definitely my, uh, my family for sure. Uh, I, I live in Florida and they're all the way in New York. So the distance is all right, but I know when I do get to see them, it's not even like any time has passed. We just pick up where we left off. So cool. Are you going to be able to go to New York in June? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, oh. I, I definitely budget out to make trips up there for them. Uh, they definitely uh, show me where I'm celebrated, not where I'm tolerated. Yeah. So I'm telling you what, every time I see those guys, it's just, it's the best times. And sometimes I just wish it would never end, but Monday's come and everybody's got to go back to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody knows that feeling, you know, and Ruben, you know, you've got a heck of a team too. And, you know, both you guys, you know, uh, you know, Toxic Teddies and, and uh, Laka, you know, you guys came and supported uh, the WCPL. You supported Steve in the tournament down there, you know? I mean, absolutely. to start with, I think that's absolutely cool as heck. But, you know, the way you guys, the way you guys all conduct yourself, both teams, now almost, I think all the teams that were there conducted themselves great. I, there was a couple individuals, you know, I wouldn't give the time of day to, but, you know, 99% of them, I think, were nothing but terrific players and terrific people. So, and, you know... And, and I like the toxic teddies. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you too. And when you're talking about uh, family and whatnot, it's crazy because the guys that were there, the majority of them we hadn't played with before. Maybe individually at scenarios, but, you know, we all came together all the way. You know, four of us, I think, were from Indiana. We had guys from Vermont. We had guys from Pennsylvania and South Florida. So... You know, in in a weekend, we all became family. We all have paintball, you know, that brought us together. And, and look how you competed. You competed good. Great. I mean, I couldn't ask anything else from those boys, you know. It is yep. great. Yep. You know, I got Joshua Strada I just put up here. Now, I got a real quick story about Josh. Josh lives down in Southern California, a, a friend of mine now. Um Josh, when I started doing my podcast a couple of years ago, Josh was one of the first people to jump on. Josh watches every week. He is he is, watches a podcast. So I got to know him, you know, going back and forth online and everything like that, but never got to meet him. Um, but, you know, I felt like I knew him. Well, I did the tournament uh, down in L.A. a couple of months ago. And I'm standing there and this guy comes up and gives me a tap on his shoulder. And he goes, Mr. Schultz, I turned around and who was it? None other than Joshua Estrada, you know. So that's what I mean. You know, I got to know him online. Would I have ever met him if it wasn't for paintball? Not at all. I wouldn't have met any of you guys that are on the screen here right now if it wasn't for paintball. So paintball gives you good memories. It really, really does. So you guys, the Toxic Teddies, are, are going to New York also, I hear, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I cannot wait to see you guys. A nice headband, by the way, too. Yeah. <laughs> what, you know, there's a really cool guy I know that, you know, this is his series that Hormesis made for him. <laughs> I love it. You, you see the stone? I got the stone right here in front, man. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like they're connected. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Ruben made this for me. Um, it's, uh, it's a bloodstone, and he put a lot of work into uh, bending it around. My wife sit, had looked at that thing for an hour, man. She was really all over that, but... It is absolutely terrific, um, you know, and you'll you'll never know how much I do appreciate that too. So, and that's why I gave it to you. I knew you'd appreciate that. But you know, you got some good guys on your team, also, my friend. Um, the captain of your team is Jacob Easter. Yeah, and uh, he's a he's a pretty good guy. I watched him. He seemed to keep everything under control pretty good. Uh, definitely, most definitely, we couldn't have done it without him. I mean, he's the one who. You know, got our Airbnb put together, you know, got our player numbers registered with you guys. Um, and he's the one who reached out and had other people as well in the community. That's another thing about the community is we needed some players to fill our roster. You know, so we had people like you and in other groups that we were sharing, you know, looking for players. And we found those players in other states, came together, 
and ended up meshing really well by by Sunday we were we were playing really well together. Yeah, you know, you guys got better after each game. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, if there would have been probably twenty games, you never know where you guys might have ended up because <laughs> you guys were rocking. Towards and the a end, lot of that, know? you know, I think a lot of that too is we went to the hybrid field. I don't think it. Well, a few of us had played mounds, but all of us are scenario players. Right. So playing that hybrid field was not unfamiliar to us. Having a lot of bodies on the field, you know, being in trees, tires, boxes, yeah. stuff like that. That was a cool field, though, wasn't it? Oh, uh, it's beautiful. I loved it. I, I, lo- I loved the heck right out of it. Man. I, I, I really did. You know, and it's the same thing with Bruce and them guys. You know, they don't live in the same place. You know, like I say, Bruce is in Florida. They're in New York, yeah. you know. But yet they, they get together and they go and play. So, you know, you don't have to, you know, I've played with guys from overseas. You know, I did a tournament mm-hmm. in France. There was myself. There was, uh, um, we had Tom K. He owned Air Gun Designs back in the day. And uh, there was uh, two guys from France, two guys from England, and a guy from Germany. And we went out and actually won that tournament. Never played together at all. Nice. And, and went out and there was something like 30 some teams and we went out and won that tournament. So you just never know, you know, sometimes uh, guys get together and they gel, you know, lockout yeah. played hard. They were rocking out there. Oh, they were, they were one of our favorite games that we played. They were tough. Oh. I think, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time. I was pulling for them in the very last game. They had that. What, what was that Bruce? You guys had a tiebreaker or something like that? Uh, <clears throat> we ended up having uh, contradictions with one of our points. Uh, I believe it was with Juggernauts. One of their refs didn't radio in uh, that our team had pulled the flag uh, first before Juggernauts, but since the Juggernauts ref radioed in, they got flag points, and then it came to an agreement that we both got the flag pull points, and it came down to a sudden death uh, to who who would move on. But we definitely played played our hearts out. We gave it what we got to. But I just know that uh, we're definitely going to hold on to that and move on forward and just remember uh, what we could do better, what we learned from it. Well, yeah, you know, boy, what a good attitude. <laughs> you know, if you ever want to get better, that's exactly how you do it, too, you know. Sitting and crying about this guy didn't do this and this guy didn't do that. That doesn't get you anywhere. It just makes you a bunch of crybabies, you know. You figure out, you know, it's like anything, you know. I mean, if your car stops running, what do you do? You figure out what's wrong to get it running again, you know. You don't kick the tires and swear at it. Right. Take responsibility, get it done, do better next time. Very, very simple, you know. And, and, you know, Steve, you guys did a great job. I I love the woods ball field. I really, really did. So yeah, I know was, you guys. Uh, you put a lot of time into that before that too. Yeah, the yeah they're um, pretty much sun up sun down for for a few weeks there to, you know, play it, change it, play it, change it, play it, change it to get try and get it just right for everybody. Um, and you know, I would I would love to say it was it was a perfect event and everything was perfect and it, it every event there's issues and and we saw the issues. I heard everything from every team. Um, you know, those are things we're going to go back and we're going to take care of. We're going to fix, you know, we, we did everything we could to, to, to course correct as needed throughout the whole event. And hopefully everybody kind of, kind of saw the, the effort and the changes we were putting into place when things would happen. Um, but overall, I mean, everybody, everybody came at the end and said they were, they had fun and, you know, that was, that was the big thing. We wanted to make sure people had fun playing well, again. That's supposed to be the common goal. That's it that's the common goal. It's not them, about you know? it's not about playing until right. you pass out and hoping that you made it. It's about having fun. <laughs> again. Hey, maybe that's what you think is fun. <laughs> but yeah. you know, <laughs> there was there was a fun. time where I thought that was a whole lot of fun. And uh, yeah. hey, you know, one thing I noticed too, man, I was never starved for air. Every time I went over to fill my tank, it was right up there. I thought that was. It, uh, it's great. it's all about working the valves just right, and trust me when I say that that you know my hand needs a needs a rest after that day. <laughs> Saturday alone, I probably turned turned tank valves hundreds of times, but uh, it was you know what that's fine you know to make yeah, sure everybody always has all the air. That's that's what I wanted. That's it is what, because you know I mean most guys go most guys go on top off after every game. Yep. You know? Oh yeah. 
Yeah. So you got a hundred plus players, you know, that's a lot of topping off my friend. Yep. So, you know, I never, I mean, I heard good things about that too, actually. I thought that was uh, absolutely very, very cool. Well, so it, you know, Dan, Dan's an owner too, right? Yeah. Dan's never air from Dan Colby, not being right. That's no, that he would not <laughs> have that not happen. Plus Dan's like a wizard at that kind of stuff, you know? I oh mean, yeah. I remember, I remember back in the day, you know, when I first started with Dan it was like 90, 90 or 91 or something like that. It was uh, 30 years ago, 32 years ago. So probably 90, 91. And he flies me down to the factory down there. He had the factory in Chicago there. A, a beautiful setup. And you walk in and God, it was just, it was really nice. It was pure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyhow, but you know, Dan's one of them guys, you know, he, everything looks perfect and everything's working perfect, but there's just, he's got to have it just that little extra. Oh, I got to get a little wa different washer. Oh, I got to have a different spring. You know, he'd have thousands of dollars worth of stuff and he just wouldn't even use it. He'd get something nope. so it would be perfect. But you know, I had a guy at your tournament go, you know what? I had an Air America system and he says it sat for four years and he goes, it never lost any air. It still has the same amount of air in it. So, you know, the, those things, I mean, those things would last through space. They, they, they worked everywhere and yeah. they didn't fail. You no, know. no, he's a, he's just meticulous, you know, and the same yep. thing that you did with your field down there, Steve, you know, you just made it user friendly, you know, and, uh, the, the people that showed up were just absolutely terrific. Um, yep. absolutely loved it. Everybody who came out was amazing. Everybody. Yep. They absolutely, absolutely were. Uh, so uh, I keep seeing Hopti. Hoopty, <laughs> baby. Hoopty, Hopti. okay, yeah, well, <laughs> all right, Hoopty. You <laughs> 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 gotta love it, though. Hey, so you where, just gravitate to that guy. <laughs> I, I know. So I hear you, you, uh, you know, Ruben was telling me, he goes, oh my God, he goes, Freddie, that guy is amazing he goes he goes out there and plays paintball and then he, as soon as he's done he sets down his marker and runs over and grabs his camera and goes and starts shooting again and stuff like that so you did a lot of shooting down there huh uh yes sir uh so on the side i run a business called inside the paint photography and i just didn't know how many photographers were going to be at that event but toxic teddies had requested my services so i definitely wanted to deliver to those guys uh uh, just as a professionalism from uh, someone from inside the paint photography to give them what they want. Because like you said, those memories to capture those moments are the most important times because we're living in a memory and to have those pictures later on down the road and be like, yo, I played in that tournament and I met some of the best people. So being able to have photos is important to me. And I know it's important to other people. And I really picked up on the photography side uh, in about 2007, 2008, the Action Pursuit Games magazine of paintball. I would just see all the beautiful photos. It was like an art piece to me as a kid. So I'd flip through that, and that's really what inspired me because I, I don't see any more magazines on a paintball field or anything like that. So I just know that was my calling. I totally, I totally agree. Now that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, is the the memories I, I, you can hang them on the wall, and, and I love the internet. Don't get me wrong, anybody. You know, I don't need any hate mail off this. But you know, the thing is, you know, if you can't walk by and look at it, you you got to pull up the computer. I can walk by it. You know, I've got cover. I've got a lot of cover shots. As a matter of fact, you mentioned APG. I've had five cover shots on APG alone. Okay. So, um, and I've got them all hanging in there. And the deal is you can walk by and look at them. You know, they're, they're just yours forever. Now online, they could be yours forever too, you know, until you can't get online anymore, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which happens to me a lot. <laughs> so I just, uh, I, I like the day of that. So, you know, you taking the pictures and uh, um, giving these guys the pictures, you know, they can print the, the ones they want and you're absolutely right. Now you got that memory on paper and you can pick it up and you can look at it anytime you feel like it. I love that. I really do. So what do you think of that, Steve? Am I right on that? Uh, I mean, I, I, I used to remember when I would go to the bookstores and they would carry the magazines. Remember borders? Yep. 
every yeah, month borders, borders, every borders, month yeah. i would go to borders and and you know i didn't have any money growing up as a kid i i saved up my money to play once at danny's field and uh and yeah i would i would absolutely go to borders and i would grab that magazine and i would sit down and i would read it cover to cover and i put it back on the rack because i couldn't afford to buy it yeah so you know i miss <laughs> that's, that's one of my that's one of my first paintball memories honestly is going to the store seeing magazines on the shelf and while my grandparents were shopping i would read the magazine walk through the store and put it back and check out Yep. Yep. Because I'm not, I'm not getting it. It's not coming home. But you know, so, sorry guys. I, I wish I could have afforded to buy every magazine, right? but you know, <laughs> I you gotta love it though. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, the magazines back in the day, they were something. Uh, they sent. I, I was very fortunate, so every month they would send them to me. But you know, I just could not wait for them to get there to see what was going on. I mean, that's how much I absolutely loved it. And the I buyers guys. Come back down. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. the buy the buyers guides when the buyers guides would come out for the beginning of the year and you'd see like uh, the budget markers and then the top tier ones and I was like one day I'm gonna have a top tier one. <laughs> see, I've never seen any of those. That probably would have made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd flip through and look for the at the very back. It would have a listing of of every field and every store and and I would just look and be like, oh. It's, you know, is there another store going to open up? Is there another store? You know, we need a store. We don't have a store. That was like paintball news, Steve. Do you remember paintball news? You old enough for that? No, I so, saw. No, this is uh, this year is my 25th year. So, oh, 90, you should, you 98. Have remembered it then. Yeah, you should have remembered paintball news. And they were around because I was West Coast editor for them for a long time. But yeah, I, I don't know if they had a major field, but out here in California, I don't care what field you went to, they sent them out every two weeks and it wouldn't cost you a penny. Man, it was just like you said, you pick it up and it had everything in it. You know, what just happened, big games, tournaments, uh, what was new. Uh, and then at the at the back, it showed all the fields on the map, where to go to these fields, what people were selling, what people were looking for. It was like the Bible uh, of people. There's, was, there's uh, probably a very good chance that they were there. And I, all I ever knew was, here's the money I have. Give me as much pain as I can afford. I'm going to shoot it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that was the beginning. You'd scrape up a couple hundred bucks. You go to the field, you just hand it over and go, what do I get for this? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now, that's how, that's how Gino got started. You know, everybody thinks Gino was a millionaire right off the start. But Gino would go out and uh, after he, he got turned on to paintball, he would go out in the fields after the games you know the 10 round tubes oh yeah these, these two guys don't remember that but you know uh the 10 round back in the day let me tell you real quick guys when i started a 10 round tube i used to go down to honest john's gun shop that's where i bought for my splat master i would buy a case of paint a case of paint was 12 10 round tubes that was a case of paint that 12 10 round tubes cost you 36 dollars plus tax period. Isn't they the Ruben's face just... They, they were 30, 30 cents a ball. So, and you know, it's not like you shot a million of them, you know, with... Uh, your yeah, own, it's, your yeah, it's a little stuff different like game. That. Yeah, but uh, I gotta tell you, it was, it was very, very expensive. And then when we started doing competition and traveling around, um, because, you know, we started the NPPL, I mean, some places paint was a buck and a half a, a case. So it was 150 a case. So... Then I got a paintball for a while, and I come back in, and they go, oh, yeah, man, paint's like 40 bucks a case. And I'm like, oh, my God, were they reusing it? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was 120 when I started, 120 a case, 40 bucks wow. a bag. Wow. Well, you know, the paint you got, you got the paint from Social, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, the, the paint shot cool. pretty good. We, we, had it, we had it made for the event. I told them what I wanted, and I told them I don't want it to stain. Yeah. Yep. You know, and that, that was, was so they good. went, okay, if you don't want it to stain, we're going to go custom. Okay. The only problem I had was when it rained that time, um, you know, because I didn't have a cover on my hopper. I mean, you, on my lower uh, you always got to make sure that your balls are protected, Fred. Don't you know this? <laughs> well, I did, but I didn't have a cover on my, uh, no, so, but anyhow, you know. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I think a lot of people ran into that issue. Uh, a that lot level. of people ran into, they, they didn't, yeah, the rain lids. Yeah. That, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I rain, just, uh, you know, I didn't expect. I didn't think it was going to rain. Man, that came out of nowhere. 
yeah and, it, and welcome to florida yeah i was gonna say that's that's florida like hoopy you're you're out in tallahassee right oh yeah it rains Three almost every day over there here, you know yeah oh yeah hoopy you had your rain lid didn't you oh yeah oh yeah for <laughs> sure i just told everybody to just throw a towel over it till it was over because it'd be over in about 15 minutes yep. yeah See, I ran a rain lid the entire event because the mound field was so sandy. I didn't want to end my hopper and mess up the function of it. And a lot of guys, after it rained, with a combination of rain and sand, was having a little hopper issues. Mm. Wow. Yeah, the, part of it. It is. Um, so, Steve, you looking forward to doing this again next year? I think I'm taking vacation next year. I let Danny <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Danny handle it next year. No, no. I'll, uh, yeah, we'll we'll absolutely be uh, be be learning to and improving everything uh, by next year. I think Ruben. I think those mounds are just going to be solid grass and uh, some nice tall brush on the top for you. Awesome. You know, I was I was asking about a little bit of vegetation on there, just a little bit. So we yeah. It was, <laughs> what's interesting is next door to us was a a, a sod farm. So you know, that's what's next door. We had was, them was come there over a little bit of it. Yeah, like in patches. We had I them come very, over and seed it. I'm very us. appreciative of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we actually had them come over and seed it, and it 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 didn't work. It it right. There's patches. It, yeah. So yeah. it worked in some of the spots, and uh, so we'll Where we'll get that figured out. You know? one, one. <laughs> yeah. You know the mounds field was still good. You know there was yeah, nothing was wrong with that. Um, that the, the woods ball field, I really, really did like that a lot. I thought that was. Uh, and so it was, was. It's a lot of fun playing on that thing, practicing and, and testing it out was was a blast. Right on. Hey, we got Jacob here. Said Bruce took care of us, so that's cool. You know, Bruce, uh, do you uh, hire out to do that then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, usually, it's by word of mouth. Uh, I don't really do advertising. Um, it's just that there's certain people I don't want to work for. Um, so I kind of leave myself to be a little exclusive. I work for the people I want to work for. There's too many Karens and too many people that I, like I think are self-destructive. Yep. And they don't mind sinking your ship while their ship sinks too. No, I, I you know what? My whole life has been based on that, my friend. Period. Uh, that was a very good way of doing it. Well, you know, you're going to be in New York. You know, uh, uh, we might have the band might hire you to come and take some pictures for us. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. Actually, uh, when I was out there, I was getting a few photos of y'all as well. I love watching y'all play. Uh, yeah. I've met so many of your members from uh, last year's event down in Gator. And right. y'all yep. are hands down the nicest group of gentlemen I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. And a whole bunch of legends at that, too. Like y'all have made paintball what it is today. I appreciate it. And easy to take pictures of us too, because you know, you don't have to have any high speed film. <laughs> oh, it's, it's still, man, right. get, getting those paints through the air, man. That's that money shot. It is absolutely right. Oh man. I got to tell you guys, I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, uh, you know, I kind of blew through my hour here. I, I should have got you on earlier. I'm going to have you, all back again. I'd like to have you guys come back again in a few weeks and talk about this before the New York tournament uh, comes sure. up. And um, yeah, we'll have Kevin on and we'll get uh, some of the other guys on and we'll talk about everybody getting ready to go to the WCPL in New York in June. <laughs> but, um, you know, I known you for a while, Ruben, great guy, such a pleasure to meet you. And uh, Appreciate you. Bruce or Hoopty, Hoopty baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you say it like that every time. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. how it is. I love it. That is that is very, very cool, buddy. You know, you're you're good for you're good for the sport. You really are. You know, the people I put on the show, I I yeah, you know, I'm not a snob, but I do hand pick, just like you do. You know, just like you do, Bruce, you pick and choose who you want to do stuff with. You know, I don't go around and badmouth anybody. But take my word for it. I won't help them. I, you I could feel it in your them. gut. Oh, yeah, I'm very good at it. You know, I got, I'll tell you something. You know, the more popular you get, the more crap you're going to take. And, uh, you know, it never it never bothered me because I'm a kind of a thick-skinned guy. I figure, you know, one less Christmas card, big deal. But, you know, it, it, it gets to your family. You know, it used to bother my mother and, and my wife and my daughter, you know. And I just tell them, you know, so you got to shake it off, you know. 
you're going to end up, the more popular you get, the people are going to hate you just because you are there and they're not. You know, it's a very strange thing. And, you know, it's one thing I've never been jealous of anybody my whole life. Envious? Maybe. Yeah. You know what I like to be them? Yeah. Am I jealous because they got it and I didn't? No, they did something to get there. You know, very, very simple. So I like the attitude that you had when you when you said that uh, you don't work for just anybody. That, that plus being exclusive like that makes you uh, makes people want you more. Than if you the right, the right people. There you go. Absolutely right. Uh, oh, my buddy Josh here. They, I wish you guys could meet Josh. If you're ever online, hit up Josh, Joshua Estrada. Hit him up. You're gonna, you're gonna love it, man. He's, uh, he's a great, great guy. And you guys would like to add. I'm telling you, he would like you guys too. He absolutely would. So I'm gonna start with you, Bruce. Um, first of all, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show tonight. And I know it's late 30 back there. So I, I really do appreciate it. But uh, I, I just, one more time, I want to say that uh, how happy I was to get to hang with you, how happy it, I was for you to come on the show tonight, and how happy I am for you to be linked up with the rest of the team lockout. I think they're a, a terrific bunch of guys. So I'm going to let you say goodbye to everybody, my friend. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity for me coming on here. And also Lockout wouldn't be able to do what they do at every event. Uh, our sponsors, uh, are, we have a glove sponsor and it's Showa Gloves. They actually help us, you know, keep our hands from getting all messed up on bunkers and a little clean and keep your nails from getting ripped off on your gear because those things definitely happen sometimes. And then we've got Champion Motorsports that's assisting us. And then JT USA and as well PB Retro with our gear. And then GRC Paintball that's run by Rob Cole. He gives us a beautiful field to practice on. But I just want to say thank you again for the opportunity. Also, Steve, it was a great event, man. I'm going to see you around. I've talked to you before. And thank also, you, Mr. You. Ruben, you're, you're awesome, yeah. brother. I just I chatted with you a little <laughs> bit, man, and you're just always good, brother. So, I gentlemen, thank you, you again, and y'all have a great night. I appreciate it. You too. you too, my friend. You stay safe, stay in touch, and i definitely going to give you an invitation to come back on the show again. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great night, gentlemen. All right. You too, brother. Good night. What a great guy, huh? See, oh, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about, good people. You know, I mean, if that guy isn't good for paintball, who the heck is? Come on. You know, I mean, positive attitude, uh, very articulate. He knows what he wants and, and knows what's bad for the sport and what's good for the sport. Absolutely loved it. So I got Ryan Courtney. My just, you guys got to meet Ryan, too. If you ever get a chance, Ryan Courtney, you, you got to meet this guy. First class all the way. That's all I can say. Um, him and I got Stefan Snow watching, too. It's another guy I got to, you know, I have to mention these guys because these guys are just the absolute terrific, terrific people. And, you know, I mentioned everybody I think is good for the sport. And these guys are all good for the sport. Terrific, terrific people. Absolutely love them. So, Ruben, you're next. Buddy, I just want to uh, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. And, and wearing my headband. I thought that was about as classy as it gets, too. I love it. Very. Thank you, brother. Yep. So, I'm going to say goodbye it. to everybody. And, uh um, yeah, if you guys, if, if you want me on Thursday, let me know and uh, give me a holler. And, well, dude, uh, I appreciate everything you've done for us, man. The event, Steve, the field was great. You thank know, you, Ruben. All the organization that you put together to make it happen, Fred, and, uh, you know, not to mention uh, the entire guys on the Teddy's team. I'm not going to list them all for time's sake, but you guys know who you are. Uh, Jacob Easter for getting it all together. Guys in battle, Indy Battlegrounds for helping us get our gear together to get out there and whatnot. Uh, good time, boys, for the headbands that we get. And uh, there's probably other people I could – I just can't think of them right now, but we couldn't do it without help. It's much yeah, appreciated. Absolutely right. Well, you know what? I got to tell you something, buddy. You you guys are worth helping. So Much appreciated. Yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate so much coming on tonight. Ruben, you stay safe, my friend. You too. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye now. All right, everybody, that was Mr. Ruben Salter. What a great guy, huh, Steve? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, 
he's such a, I, you know, I, I got to meet him. I, you know, I, I talked to him on his show before, but I never got to meet him face to face until uh, your tournament, you know, and it, that's, these guys don't understand, you know, just how tickled I am inside to meet these guys, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's great. You know, it's, it's, it's back when Dan used to tell me that, you know, oh, well, you're going to be the future one day. And I'm like, nah. And now I'm like, you know, these guys are going to be the future one day. You know, they're, they're yeah. going to be the field owners. They're going to be the shop owners. They, it's, it's great to, to get to meet them when they were young and, you know. Oh, I, I totally playing. agree. And, and, you know, you know, obviously we're getting older. That's just how life is, period. You know, but, you know, don't you feel comfortable passing the baton off to somebody like Ruben? You know, oh, yeah. Bruce and these yeah. guys, you know, I'm, come on, you know. These guys, you know, they will they will keep paintball rolling in a positive manner. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And Steve, um, I say hi to your your lovely wife Gail. She uh, she walked her butt off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, she was working the crowd, man. She she, she was everywhere. Crowd. She was making. She was doing her best to make sure everybody had everything they needed. She got did. everything they wanted. You know, and she you know, brought us coffee, man. Come on, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For everybody who didn't who didn't know, sorry guys, but yeah, we had coffee too. Um, you know, yeah, it, it was great. It really, really was. Uh, so you get a chance, give her a hug for me and tell her. Uh, I will. We appreciate everything, and and Steve, we appreciate the job that you did. Yeah, thank you for the and tournament. Could, you know, you could you not have done it without up. Danny too. He's yep. just uh, too busy driving at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, you guys, you guys did the WCPL justice. You did a terrific Thank job. Thank you. Thank you. It was our honor. It was our my, honor. My pleasure. Believe me, we were very, very happy with you. All right, Steve. Well, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go have dinner. Yeah. So, I'm staring uh, at mine right now. It's on the other side of this camera. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right, brother. You have a good evening, my friend. All right, you too. All right. Everybody, that was Mr. Steve Prisco, uh, half owner of Panhandle Paintball, where we had the last WCPL tournament this last weekend. What a great bunch of people. Um, you know, everybody out there, uh, I, I wish you could meet these guys that I'm I'm talking to. I wish you could meet all of these people individually and look at them face to face and talk to them, you know. Uh, like I say, you know, I got, I got to talk to Ruben online. I got to talk to him on, on the show, you know, my show and his show. But meeting them face to face and then, then getting this just cool cool ass bloodstone you know he didn't throw this together this is I, I wish i could take it off and, and roll it all the way around but uh, i put it on my mic because i want everybody to see it it's gonna bring me luck just looking at it brings me luck and happiness so all right everybody next week we're going to talk a little bit more about the tiger stripe tiger stripe the original tiger stripe coming out like i say um that version with the all camo and then the version with the body camo and the black sleeves, uh, the OFG, the original Fred gear, they'll all be coming here within a couple of weeks. Um, so next week we'll give you a little more information on it and, and tell you what's going on. But uh, I want to thank you all for watching tonight. And I want to thank all my guests tonight. And uh, I just, uh, I wish you all could experience everything I get to do in paintball. I just, I, I wish I could share all my experiences because I got to tell you, there's none better than hanging out with these guys. These guys are the cream of the crop and they make life worth living. So, and like I say, remember everybody, singly, we can do a lot for paintball. Collectively, we can do a lot for paintball. So let's all work together, make our sport bigger and better. I love it. So until next Tuesday evening, seven o'clock Pacific time on Facebook, on Flagpole Productions, please, everybody, play hard, play safe, play fair. Get out there and play some paintball. All right? See you next week now. <laughs>